Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, it took me quite some time to really narrow down a list of, in my opinion, five teams, the top five teams, if you will, that can really be dominant over the next five or so years in the NHL that are either starting to be dominant already or on the cusp of doing so. So a lot of things factored into my decision making here, whether it be current prospect pools, draft picks, or some players that they already have in the roster, all that in between. But a big factor that really led to some of my decision making was the fate of the 2020 NHL draft. Now, while regardless of when it is going to happen, it will happen at some point. And with all that being said, there are certain teams that have really stockpiled this draft when it comes to picks that can really push them over the edge and becoming a dominant force in the NHL along with the prospects that they already have. So some teams that just didn't make my list, unfortunately, that many could argue could make it and I wouldn't doubt them at all because this was definitely some more opinion based, but for good reason. Uh, the LA Kings just didn't crack my roster, the Florida Panthers, the Arizona Coyotes, and possibly the Vancouver Canucks, but the Canucks are just edged out from being an honorable mention in my opinion. But those three teams especially just didn't make it. The Kings were neck and neck between making that fifth spot, but just didn't make it, and I'll explain why. But they have some fantastic young talent on that team. Ones that have really been eye-opening in my opinion are, of course, Gabriel Velarde, what he's done in a short stay in the NHL. I'm a big fan of Arthur Kaliev, who's a big prospect for the LA Kings on the offensive front, who I don't understand why he slipped in the second round last year in the draft, but he did. And there are plenty of others too, but those are just some that I personally like a lot. And then when it comes to the Florida Panthers, Gregory Denisenko looks like he can be a goal scoring machine on the offensive front for the Florida Panthers in their future. Big fan of his, and I also am a fan of Owen Tippett and the Finnish centerman who I don't wanna butcher his name, but I'm a big fan of his as well. And then, of course, when it comes to the Coyotes, you you have guys like Barrett Hayden and you have Victor Soderstrom on the defensive front. A lot of things to like there. But with all that being said, those are guys that just didn't make my list. So here's why. Starting at number five, I have the Montreal Canadiens. And while the Canadiens may not stack up much better than, say, the Panthers or the Canes when it comes to prospects. And by the way, at the end of this video, I will have a video regarding certain prospect pulls. So make sure you check that out because that will go more in depth on these certain prospect pulls of the teams I'm talking about currently. But when it comes to the Canadians especially, they have 14 picks in the draft this year. That is the best in the NHL. Even though they only have one first round pick, they have a total of nine picks, I believe, in the first three rounds, which is ridiculous. So they have a lot that they can do and take um, take advantage of a very deep, arguably the best NHL draft in history that has yet to be made given the prospects development and time. But that, that's something that's been thrown around for a while and rightfully so with just how deep this draft is. But the Canadians have a chance to make some big moves and if you look at their current roster, they have guys, of course, like Nick Suzuki, who's really thriving in his rookie season. Ryan Paling, when healthy, it looks like he can be a big part of their offense going forward. And then you have guys, of course, like Max Domi and Jonathan Druin, who I'm a big fan of Max Domi especially. So, And when it comes to Druin, it all depends on him being healthy and what his ceiling really can be. But with all that being said, you also have guys, of course, in their prospect pool, whether it be guys like Cole Caulfield, who is a fantastic goal scorer, who looks like he will be a crucial part to the Canadians' future, and sooner than later, hopefully, my guess is within the next year or so. And then you also have um, Alexander Romanov, who looks like he's going to be signing with the Montreal Canadiens, leaving um, CSK in Moscow in the KHL to sign his entry-level deal. I don't know if that's been made official yet, but I have seen reports on it, and he looks like he is going to be big for them, especially on the blue line. They have other prospects too, too, but there's just a lot to like. And then, of course, you can't forget guys like Jesperi Kaki and Yemi and Caden Primo, who looks like he will be the next big thing in goaltending for the Montreal Canadiens once Carey Price's time there is done. So a lot to like there, but for all those reasons, I have the Canadians at number five because they just look like they can really be dominant sooner than later. They were pushing for a playoff spot at numerous points this season and just wait until they get younger, faster, and more better honestly these are talking they have some grade a prospects these are not you know borderline c or low b level they have some fantastic prospects that they are dealing with that are right on the cusp of being nhl ready next on my list at number four i have the 
Ottawa Senators. The Ottawa Senators, you might be wondering, why do you have them on your list? They're one of the worst teams in the league. That may be true, but their prospect pool is absolutely ridiculous. And while I'm not a fan of their management, as I'm not when it comes to the Canadians either, I'm not a Mark Bergerman fan, and for good reason. And same thing with Pierre Dorian when it comes to the Senators, but I'm hoping that Dorian takes the right approach to this NHL draft. He has three first round picks in the 2020 NHL draft. We're talking two can easily be the one and two or top three picks overall. And then they have the Islanders first round pick that can be middle of the pack when it comes to the first round. So there's so much to like just there, but they have 13 picks overall in this draft, which was a big part of them cracking my top five. But their prospect pool is nuts and they have so much young talent that once they all develop and get some veteran leadership in that locker room too, they are going to be fantastic for years to come. You already have guys like Thomas Shabbat, who looks like he will be their future captain, in my opinion, on the blue line. You have Eric Brandstrom, who when he really develops in the NHL, he looks like he can be a very strong offensive mind defenseman. And then you have guys like um, Drake Batherson, who looks like he will be huge on the offensive front for them. You have Brady Kachuk, who's been fantastic since being drafted by the Senators. And you have Logan Brown, a big body centerman, who looks like he will be a crucial part to their success in the future too. And you can't forget Colin White is still there. There's all these guys that you kind of forget about. It seems like they've been around for a bit now, but they're so young. Even Anthony Duclair, you know, he's a solid 20 plus goal scorer for them. He's still relatively young. So there's just so much to like there. And then you can even throw in um, Norris, who was acquired from uh, the Auto Senators in the trade that I believe had Eric Carlson going to the San Jose Sharks, because I know. Josh Norris was drafted by the Sharks in the first round back in 2017. But a lot to like there. They have plenty of other prospects too, but that was just some. And that is all in part as to why I had them number four on my list. Next at number three, I have the Carolina Hurricanes. I love the Hurricanes. I love their roster. I love so much about them. And while they did make a lot of moves that might come back to bite them at the deadline, given the fact of the whole pandemic happening now, that may be true. But regardless, they just have so much young talent. And they are a team that I did talk about as well regarding their prospect pools in the past, and rightfully so. But you have so many guys, whether it be on the roster now, like Andrei Svechnikov, who has yet to even get clo- remotely close to what his peak is is going to be in his NHL career. Same thing with Sebastian Ajo, two young dominant players. Tavo Teravainen, who's been killing it for quite some time now, who's really underrated in my opinion. Then you look on their defense, especially whether it be Jacob Slavin, who's in my opinion the best defenseman in the NHL, or at least one of them. Brett Pecci, another fantastic, more stay-at-home defenseman. And then you have Dougie Hamilton on the blue line, who's still young and was having a Norris caliber season up until he broke his leg halfway through the season in a game against the Columbus Blue Jackets, I believe. Uh, because I remember watching that game. But there are so many things I like when it comes to the Hurricanes. And then you, of course, have Marty Neches, who I am a big fan of. I've been a fan of him since he's been drafted. The young Finnish forward looks like he will be a crucial part to Carolina going forward in their top six. And then you have guys like Ryan Suzuki, who's one of their better prospects, of course. Dominic Bach, who I'm a big fan of, who was originally drafted by the St. Louis Blues, who they acquired in the trade, sending Justin Falk going the other way to the St. Louis Blues from the Hurricanes. But a lot to like there. There are plenty of other prospects too, but those are just some that I personally like. And with all those reasons being said and just how good Carolina is already, I fully expect them to be dominant for years and years to come. Which leads me to my second um, uh, number on my list. Number two on my list is the New York Rangers. Yes, I am a Rangers fan, but even with Being a Rangers fan, I can't be biased here. And while I would love to put them at number one, you'll understand why I didn't after I talk about them. But the Rangers, so happy with the moves that they have been done. They have been viewed as the team to really look at how to set up the foundation of doing a rebuild and a retool type scenario. They've only been in this for about three years or so now, and they have done a fantastic job with Jeff Gordon and now uh, new president, um, um, John Davidson. They have done such a great job for them. If you look at what the team currently looks like, they have a mix of youth and some veteran leadership. Artemi Panarin leading the way, um, being fantastic in his first season with them. But then you have rookies who have yet to blossom, whether it be guys like Capo Kako, Vitaly Kratsov. You have guys in the still um, a little bit from coming to the NHL, but sooner rather than later. And Niels Lundqvist, their top prospect, defensive prospect. Um, Keandre Miller, who signed his entry-level contract with them, which I did a video on not that long ago, too. 
fantastic um, big body two-way uh, defenseman. And you have all these other guys, too, in between that just look like they're going to be fantastic for the Rangers going forward. And with all that being said, too, you have, of course, on the blue line currently, you have guys like Adam Fox, who has been amazing in his rookie season. That does not get enough credit, in my opinion. But that's with me being a Rangers fan, so take that as you will. But Tony D'Angelo has been fantastic on the offensive front um, for the blue line for the Rangers. Jacob Truba hasn't been fantastic, but hasn't been necessarily too much of a liability either. And Ryan Lundgren, another young defenseman in his rookie year, along with Adam Fox, that pairing has been one of the best young pairings in all of the NHL. So but there's so much to like there. And Philip Heedle too. I'm forgetting about Heedle when he's been in the league for a couple of years now. He looks like he will be big for the Rangers in their top six going forward. There's just so much to love when it comes to the Rangers roster and their future. And I know that they have plenty of other fantastic prospects still in their ways away from being up to the NHL level. But with all those reasons being said and the fact that the Rangers have 10, for, 10 um, picks in the draft this year, including two first round picks, that all went in part to me picking them at number two on my list. And the Hurricanes have seven picks in the um, draft this year, by the way. And <clears throat> they have zero first round picks because the Rangers acquired their first round pick in the trade for Brady Shea, Shea at the deadline earlier this season. But now at number one on my list, I have the Colorado Avalanche. The Avalanche are just an amazing team to watch night in and night out. And when they're all healthy, who knows what they're capable of? Because that's been their biggest problem this season, injuries. But if you look at Nathan McKinnon is still so young. He's only 24 years old. You have Miko Rantanen right there. Um, I wouldn't say Landis Scott is old yet, but he's one of the older guys in that locker room, surprisingly. Andre Burakovsky, I'm a huge fan of, really big fan of his. And you have all these other guys in the lineup, whether it be Tyson Jost, who really hasn't shown much yet with how deep this team has been. You have other guys on the blue line, like Ryan Graves, who I'm a big fan of, who was originally drafted by the Rangers. You have Kale McCarr, who's leaned the way on that defense as well. And then, of course, you have the goaltending that's been up and down due to injuries, but overall, it's not terrible. And their prospects are just ridiculous, with Bowen Byram leading the way on the defensive front as their number one prospect and one of the best prospects in the league. You have Alex Newhook, who I'm a massive fan of, who was just named uh, Rookie of the Year in college for BU this year this year, which is fantastic for his case. I love his story too, that led him to being drafted. And you have other guys like Marin Cott, I'm a big fan of as well. So there's just so much to like there when it comes to the Colorado Avalanche. They're already in a win now stage. They're one of the best teams in the NHL already. And just think about them healthy and having more of these top tier prospects come in the NHL and hit on all cylinders. The future is unbelievably bright for the Avalanche for the next decade easily and the same goes for some of these other teams on my list but that is going to conclude this list and the avalanche only have six picks in the draft this year and have one first round pick so not a lot but regardless of that they have such a fantastic prospect pool and an overall team so that isn't phasing them by any means joe sakic is doing a great job with them but like I said, with all that being said, that is going to conclude this video. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you agree, disagree with me, maybe wonder why I didn't pick certain teams to make my list. I would love to hear your feedback. And please also make sure to check out the other videos I have right down here below, including the prospect pools video, among other things. So once again, thank you all so much. Please like, subscribe, comment if you like this video, and I'll be back in a day or two.